October, November, 2023, paper 5, variant 2. Question 1. This question is about the enthalpy change of neutralization, uh, reactions between the sodium hydroxide and the uh, hydrochloric acid. And this is the titration between them. So uh, we put the acid in the polystyrene cup, titrate uh, with the sodium hydroxide solution. So we roughly go through the step, then we discuss the question. Uh, for the step one, uh, we put the acid solution in the cup with this uh, volume and this concentration. And after that, put the thermometer with 0 0.2 degrees C division into the acid and record the temperature. So we're going to use this uh, for the calculations Okay, of the percentage uh, error. Step 3. Add 5 cm cube aqueous sodium hydroxide from the burette, stir and record the temperature. Means after we put 5 cm cube into the solution, okay, so we measure the temperature once, then we add another 5 cm cube, then we do the same thing until it reach the maximum temperature. And after that, okay, the last step is um, repeat step four until no further increase in temperature. Once temperature decreases, repeat the step four three more times. So you get something uh, uh, in table 1.1. So table 1.1 shows the volume of the uh, sodium hydroxide added from 0 to 40 cm cube. Temperatures now. Okay, this one is uh, increase after that decrease. So after 27.4, then it start to decrease, right? And means after this point, actually the maximum temperature is between this and this. Okay, after this, uh, this uh, temperature or this volume, uh, so the temperature start to decrease, uh, it's actually telling us that no neutralizations happen. And the temperature decrease, uh, it has two factors, uh, because of heat loss, and another one is uh, we we keep on adding the solutions in there, right? So it will it will lower the temperature. Part A one, plot a graph of temperature, uh, y axis against the volume of uh, sodium hydroxide added. Uh, this one is x axis, uh, and uh, after that, draw two straight lines of best fit. One of that should be uh, rise in temperature, and another one is fall in temperature. And they must extrapolate, and therefore they intersect. Uh, you should get something like this. Okay, let me. Okay, so you should get these uh, graphs. Uh, if you plot it uh, according uh, to the data given, so you get this uh, first line. So this one is the increased in the temperature. Uh, so it must be a best fit. Uh, best fit means uh, uh, try to uh, pass through at any plot as possible uh, and is balanced. Okay, and another best fit line should be here, this one. Uh, please remember uh, there is uh, one abnormal point uh, at uh, 40 cm cube of sodium hydroxide, this plot. Uh, it's obviously is there an anomalous so do not include this one in the best fit so you can draw a very best fit line uh, without this anomalous so therefore the maximum temperature is actually not 27.4 uh, it should be higher than that so it's here somewhere here uh, it's about 27 something uh, later we'll discuss right so this is how it looks like now let's get back to the the question. Okay, so once we plot the graphs, uh, so use your graph to determine the maximum temperature change uh, of the mixture. Uh, in my graph, uh, I get uh, twenty-seven point eight. Uh, initial temperature is eighteen point eight. 
Okay, somewhere here, 27.8, my one, roughly, uh, roughly. So, um, so use the maximum temperature minus the initial temperature. So, uh, should get some something like this, about 9 degrees C. Uh, so, this is the delta T, uh, the maximum temperature change of the mixture. After that, part 3, use your graph to determine the volume of the sodium hydroxide needed to neutralize 25 cm cube of the 1 mole per dm cube HCl. Uh, so for my graph, uh, is uh, here, it's roughly uh, 18. Uh, so it's here, 18. So from this intersect, uh, let me do this again. So you just get, okay, the intersect, you can get the temperature and you can get the volume. So my volume is about 18 here, 18 cm cube. Okay, so therefore, my one is uh, 18. Uh, yours, if you try to plot, you should get somewhere near to this value. Part 4. Use your answer in part 3. Calculate the concentration of sodium hydroxide in mole per dm cube. Uh, so this one, uh, you need to know uh, what is the mole ratio between them. Uh, so is 1 mole of sodium hydroxide react with 1 mole of HCl. So they have the same mole now. Mole of HCl means at neutralization point, means at the end point. Um, so the most of HCl, it should be equal to most of sodium hydroxide. Since the uh, volumes and the concentration of HCl we know, so it's, we use mv over 1000, okay, equal to, uh, this is the concentration we need to get, concentration of sodium hydroxide, times the volume of sodium hydroxide used over 1000. So uh, means uh, in a simple way, we can actually do like this. Concentration of sodium hydroxide therefore is 25 over 18, so you get uh, 1.39 around that. Okay, so this graph done. Um, now, suggest why titration using an indicator is more accurate than the thermometric titration. Uh, actually, you can include the heat loss also because uh, it's uh, 5 cm cube added. Uh, then we stir and we record. Actually, during that process, uh, the few steps, uh, the heat loss is there. So that's why it cannot really uh, be the good method uh, because of heat loss. Uh, yeah, why we want to use indicator? Because uh, indicator uh, will change color instantly. So when we use the acid-based indicator, uh, so we can uh, <clears throat> we can get the endpoint easily, right? Then we can uh, get the concentration of the sodium hydroxide easily, rather than using thermometer. Okay, part B. Suggest a suitable piece of apparatus to transfer 25 cm cube of 1 mole per dm cubic cl in step 1. Uh, the one that you need to really uh, emphasize is actually this one. You should use by bed it's better for you to put volumetric pipette. So this is more specific. Pipette itself sometimes is quite general. So it's better for you to put 25 cm cube volumetric pipette. For part C, determines the percentage error of the measured temperature increase. This is actually delta T. In order to get delta T, we must use two values, initial and final. So means we're going to read two times. Okay, when first 5 cm cube of NaOH is added. So this one is already uh, told us that is the first addition. First addition is what? Okay, get back to the, the table. The first addition temperature is increased from 18.8 to 21.3. This is the first addition. So we use this temperature and this temperature to get delta T. Means we use 21.3 minus 18.8. So we get the delta T.
n. In the step, actually, uh, uh, it's already told us that uh, it's 0 0.2 degree C division, means each line is going to be 0 0.2 degree C. And therefore, uh, half of a graduation is 0 0.1, means in between is 0 0.1 degree C. Therefore, the uncertainties is the plus minus 0 0.1 degree C. This is uncertainties based on the divisions given. To calculate the percentage error, we need to use the uncertainties, which is 0 0.1. And because uh, it's involved two readings, we read two times. So it's initial and final. So we need to times two. Two times uh, 0 0.1 over the delta T. Delta T is uh, this one. So it's 2.5. So therefore, we get 8%. For the part D, the standard enthalpy change of a neutralization is defined as the enthalpy change of one mole of H2O form from this uh, the hydrogen ion and hydroxide. Um, so actually, it means this. Okay, uh, hydrogen ion react with hydroxide from one mole of H2O. In another experiment, a student finds that 22.1 cm cube of uh, 1 mole per dm cube sodium hydroxide increases uh, the temperature by 6 degrees C when 25 cm cube of 1 mole per dm cube HCl used. Then, from here, you have to identify which one is the limiting agent. Uh, because the reactions between the HCl and NaOH is 1 to 1 mole ratio, and it's given now concentration both one mole per dm cube. Now the volume is different. Uh, we choose the lower volume because this one is telling us that sodium hydroxide is a limiting agent or limiting factor. So therefore, when we calculate the enthalpy, we should use the moles of sodium hydroxide because this one is the limiting agent. So now it's uh, quite clear. Uh, we need to get the Q first. Uh, of course, the question uh, gives you the hints uh, how to calculate this one. Uh, but the, there is a more details and uh, a better approach to, to get the correct answer. Uh, first, actually, we need to calculate the Q. Uh, so Q is uh, equal to mc delta t. Uh, m is the total mass. In this case, it's the total volume uh, of the solution because already mm -hmm. given. 1 cm cube of solution uh, is uh, 1 gram. So means uh, uh, if you get uh, uh, 50 cm cube means 50 gram, right? So therefore, the mass is 22.1 plus 25. So this is the mass okay, of the solution times the uh, specific heat capacity of the water, 4.18. Must use 4.18, just use the one from the table. And Delta T is given uh, is uh, 6 degrees C. So therefore, we get 1181.3 uh, Joule. Uh, so this, what, this heat, then we, need, we can use it to calculate the, the enthalpy change of neutralization. So delta H is equal to negative, uh, actually here, it's, uh, here, negative Q over 1000 N. Why 1000? Because we need to convert the Joule to kilojoule. Uh, and uh, we use this mole. The mole is uh, the sodium hydroxide. Okay, calculate the moles of sodium hydroxide. Uh, so you get 0 0.22, uh, sorry, 0 0.0221 mole. So just substitute the Q that calculated over 1000 and use the N here, 0 0.0221. So you will get negative 53.5 kilojoule per mole. Part E, the theoretical vo value for the uh, standard enthalpy change of neutralization in this reaction between the HCl and NOH is negative uh, 57.6. This is a theory value, but uh, what we calculate is actually is actually negative 53.5. So give one reason why the value you obtain in the part D differ from theory. Very easy, uh, it's always because of heat loss. Because of heat loss to surrounding, 
not all to the water so therefore uh, the water absorb lesser heat temperature increase is lesser then the delta H you get is lesser uh, there's a there's a reason part F suggest why the standard enthalpy change of neutralization determines uh, using ethanoic acid is less exothermic than the uh, standard enthalpy change using HCl uh, first you need to know the ethanoic acid is a weak acid means uh, one mole of ethanoic acid it won't really form one mole of H plus and the ionization is actually need to absorb heat means the delta H is endo so means some heat is going to absorb to ionize this weak acid therefore the heat that obtained from the experiment is lesser than expected uh, so first you need to say that ethanoic acid is weak acid and dissociation of the ethanoic acid is endothermic therefore heat is needed okay, for this uh, dissociation okay, so some energy released from the reaction will be used to uh, for the dissociation of ethanoic acid okay, that's all thank you